what's up my name is leah welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video so today is the start of my summerween reading vlogs and if you don't know the summerween readathon is an annual readathon that's hosted by gabby from gabby reads and it's all about bringing the spooky halloween vibes into the summertime and she hosts it every july and so this year i'm doing multiple vlogs hopefully if all goes according to plan and i made a whole tbr video that you can watch here i'll link it down below and basically what i did is i pulled 10 book titles from a tbr jar and then i read the first chapter of each of those 10 books to narrow it down to a top 5 TBR. So today is the first day of us getting into reading that top 5 TBR. And one of the first books I would like to start is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So this is a thriller about a woman whose family owns this really creepy house and when she was growing up they only lived there for like a month or so and then they fled in the middle of the night because it was supposedly haunted and she thought that her father sold the home but apparently he did not and now he has passed away and she's inherited the home and right after they fled the house he wrote this whole book talking about uh, how creepy the house was and how it's super haunted and it's basically like a famous memoir and so everybody knows this main character Maggie as like the girl who used to live in the haunted house and the story has kind of like followed her around her entire life and she hates it and she never believed it she thought it was total bullshit that her dad did as like a ploy to get money and now she is the owner of this house and so she goes to the house to try and figure out if it is in fact haunted or not and the story kind of goes from there and then the other book that I'd really like to get into in this vlog is called Another Kind and this is a like middle grade graphic novel I think and it has a really cool art style it's kind of like X-Men where it's following this found family group of young kids and they each have their own magical abilities and they're all orphans and they're kind of being like hidden away by the government because they don't want like society to know that there's these magic beings out there and so those are the two books that I'd like to start in this vlog lies lies and slander and we'll just see how it goes and hopefully we can have like a fun spooky time maybe watch like some spooky movies maybe go to the lake hang out with my cat and we're just gonna have a fun spooky week so without any further ado let's get into the reading vlog
we're back from the farmer's market and I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a like art and book haul. So at the farmer's market they had a bunch of really cool little uh, local artist stands and so I got some really cool stuff. So I got this little tiny print and it's like this little uh, almost like fairy forest print. It's really tiny but it's really really cute. And I also grabbed some handmade bookmarks too. So I found this one that has eyeballs on it. And I thought this was really cute. It kind of reminded me of like the cover of Mayfly. And I got this other one too that's this really cool liquid print. And I'm really excited about these because I think they're really cute. And then I also found another artist who does like printmaking stuff. And so I got a little card from her with the ladybug. And then I also got these little like canvas pieces. So I think I'm going to put them together and make like a little prayer flag kind of banner for my office. But I got one that's uh, the ladybug. And I got another one that's this dancing lady that's really cool. I got this little funky deer with the eyelashes. And then I also got a guitar one. So I'm going to make a little prayer flag thing out of these, I think, maybe like later tonight. And I'm really excited about that. And then I also wanted to do a little book haul because we stopped at the local bookstore on the way home, of course. Had to. Had to do it. And so I got a few things. So the first thing I got is this little baby book. And so this is for one of the ladies at work who's pregnant and she's having a little girl this summer. And so I got her this little like finger puppet sunflower book because I thought it was really cute. And then I also got a graphic novel for me and it's called plain jane and the mermaid so this is a middle grade graphic novel and i got this because i really want to do like a mermaid reading vlog sometime this summer and so i thought this would be perfect for that and the art is really cool it's kind of a little bit of a darker style and you can kind of see on the back of the book as well it's really pretty and i'm really excited about it and i also think that the mermaid stuff in here is pretty cool too it's kind of giving the little mermaid energy a little bit that I was looking for, which I think is really fun. And this author is one that I've read from before, and I read her graphic novel memoir, and I just read it a couple months ago, and it's this one, it's called Be Prepared, and I really enjoyed this one. It's got like a summer camp setting, and so I thought this would be really fun to add to my TBR for the summer. And then lastly, I got a book for my dad. So dad, if you're watching this, um, skip ahead for a sec. But it's this really cool like pie cookbook. And my dad makes a lot of rhubarb pies and stuff. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to get him like a really nice pie book from the store. So I got him that. And that's kind of my little haul. But I also wanted to give you a little bit of a reading update and talk through the couple books that I've started and then also what reading prompts they're going to count for for the readathon. So I started two books. So the first one I started is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So my initial thoughts of this, I'm not that far in, are that the story is interesting and I'm into the haunted house ghosty vibes but I'm not a super big fan of the characters so we're following our main character Maggie and when she was a kid her parents bought this super creepy old Victorian house called Bainbury Hall and basically they lived in it for like a month and then they ran because it's haunted and creepy and they didn't feel safe and her father ended up going on to write a whole story about when they lived in the house and it ended up being like this famous bestseller of a book and it's kind of like ruined Maggie's life in a lot of ways because she constantly lives in the shadow of this book because in the book she was depicted as this like really scared five-year-old girl but she doesn't remember anything from that time of her life and now her dad has passed away and she's inherited Bainbury Hall and she thought that he sold the house years ago like before her parents divorced and turns out that he did not and he's had it all these years and he never told anybody and so now the lawyer is giving her the keys to the house and he's like this is part of your inheritance like good luck and she flips houses for work and so I think she's probably going to move into this house and see what's going on because she thinks the whole story is bullshit that her dad just made up she doesn't believe that the house is haunted and the story kind of goes from there but we also get to see the uh, flashbacks from her dad and these like excerpts from his book that he wrote about the house and when they were like looking at the house and how they came to purchase it and all that kind of stuff and I do not like her dad just from his POV he gives me the ick a little bit he is such a pompous asshole and he talks about how he and his wife are having all these marital problems and they're fighting all the time and so they buy this big fancy house in the hopes that it will like give them some more space like away from each other and she got this like new job and so she can afford to like get the house and he is gonna like stay home with the daughter and he's a writer and he's like yeah I just wanted to like stay home with my daughter and write the next great American novel 
And I'm like, shut up Steinbeck, like literally nobody cares. And he's just so full of himself and he doesn't really treat his wife very well, I don't think. And it's so weird when they go to tour this Bainbury Hall place because literally the realtor is making weird ass comments the whole time. Like she opens up the front door of the house and she immediately like makes the sign of the cross. And she walks in and there's these creepy like portraits of the family who built the place. They're painted on the fireplaces so you can't take them out of the house. And it's really strange and the little girl is like that guy in the painting looks creepy and the dad's like oh it's probably fine and the realtor tells him a little bit about the family who built it and they were like yeah uh they had a daughter and she died and of course the dad is like oh i really like this uh room and turns out that bedroom that he gave to maggie was the dead girl's room like how creepy is that like you don't give a five-year-old girl the bedroom of the dead daughter from the previous family like how creepy is that and the dad just like does not think it through at all like does not believe in ghosts doesn't believe in any of that stuff and the mom's like really into antiques and so they buy this house and immediately the young girl maggie is like creeped out and she says that the ghosts like speak to her and stuff and it's really creepy and so i kind of like seeing the creepy stuff from before but i don't like being in the dad's head if that makes sense so that's kind of where i'm at with this i'm interested to see what happens but but I'm not super in love with the characters. And then I picked this one up because it counts for the Summerween prompt of read a book that's a thriller or a horror. And then the next book that I picked up is completely different. So I picked A Monster Romance and I picked this one because it has five words in the title and it's called To Marry a Lich. So this is just one that I randomly found on Goodreads when I was like deep diving in monster romances the other day. And I didn't realize that it's like over 500 pages, which I think is hilarious. And so I just kind of picked up on a whim it's on hoopla as an ebook and i just started it and it's really good so far i'm really into it and we're following this girl dahlia and this is set in a fantasy world and she's an elf and she has found this old manor house in the woods that's like abandoned and she figured out how to like sneak in the front gate and in front of the house there's this big cemetery and so she has a really bad home life her parents have passed away she has a really evil stepdad who's trying to control her and like marry her off and stuff to try and like get her inheritance and so she runs away to the forest and like will go and sing and like tell stories to the like dead people in the cemetery but what she doesn't know is that the house is actually not abandoned and there's this guy named Sebastian who lives there and he is a lich and he has these like really powerful necromancy powers and stuff and he is I think like immortal he's been alive for like 900 years in this same house and so he has seen her for a long time she's been going to the house for like five years and so he's been watching her for five years at the window when she comes to visit and stuff but he's never like made his presence known and he also has like people who work for him who live in the house who are like ghosts and stuff like there's this one girl who's a banshee and there's this other guy who i think he's like a orc that sebastian like brought back to life like frankenstein style and so it's a really interesting group of people who live in this house and they all kind of know about and I think that Sebastian kind of is down bad for her because he's been watching her for a long time out the window and she doesn't even know that like he exists or anything and so the story kind of goes from there because they end up hi Rigby and he oh yeah are you gonna tell the synopsis or do you want me to tell it Anyways, so the guy Sebastian ends up introducing himself to Dahlia because one day she runs into the cemetery and she's being chased by this man and one of her creepy stepdad's like little henchmen tries to propose to her and she turns him down and like laughs in his face because Dahlia is like a total spitfire and she doesn't take any shit and he comes after her and tries to kill her and he tries to kill her on the lich's property and so the Sebastian guy, the lich, gets really pissed and he like takes the guy out and saves Dahlia but she gets knocked out and she doesn't know what happened to the guy and the lich is basically like you know come into the house like all you know make sure you're okay and everything and his uh like employees help her and like give her like a warm bed to sleep in and like help her shower and like get into dry clothes and stuff because the creepy guy tried to drown her uh, on the property and it's really interesting and so Sebastian is immediately like this girl is like mine and he kind of tells her like I hope that you'll be happy here but like you can't leave 
and that's kind of where we're at right now and that's just like a few chapters in but I'm really enjoying it I really like the writing I wasn't sure what it was going to be like especially because it's so long but it's really well written actually and I really like the characters I think Sebastian's really interesting and I'm curious to see what happens with him and it seems like he is also using his powers to like protect the town that Dahlia is from and he has this like bubble barrier that he's put over the town to keep out dragons and like other evil spirits and stuff and so he has a lot of power in this world and so I'm not sure if he's gonna like help her get away from her stepdad or what that kind of seems like it's the vibe but he's definitely super powerful and Dahlia can like sense that he's really powerful and he also wears this big like uh, witch doctor like a bird mask thing so she's never really seen his face but she's not scared of him even though he's really powerful and she is an elf but she doesn't seem to have any powers and so she can sense his powers but she doesn't have anything that she's working with and he can also see auras and so he can see that she's like a really sweet like happy person and he's trying to make sure that if he basically like takes her as his like mistress or bride or whatever his plan is he wants to make sure that she's like happy in the house and so he tells his assistant the ogre guy that they're gonna do this scientific uh research project to collect data on a hypothesis and the assistant's like what are you talking about and he's like i need to find out if she can be happy here and it's really cute and tender so i'm excited about this guy sebastian the lich because he seems like he's got some interesting magic powers and he obviously like cares about her but on the other hand he doesn't want her to leave which is a little weird and he's a scientist and he's got like some frankenstein laboratory vibes going on in the basement of this manor house so i'm interested to see what happens but i'm really enjoying it so far i highly doubt that i'll finish it in this uh whole summer ween week because it's so long but who knows maybe i'll get super into it and just like binge the whole thing but both of these books count for some of the reading prompts so that's good so we're already making some headway and i think tonight i might try to do the read in a dark prompt because i've been reading the ebook of uh, How to Marry a Lich on my phone anyways so it's not gonna be hard for me to like read that in the dark and like hit that prompt and then we're already like hitting three prompts right off the bat so that's pretty cool and I'm excited about that so I think I'm gonna go do some more reading and I will update you when I've read something else So I wanted to give you a little reading update before bed. I'm about 100 pages into How to Marry a Lich and it's still really really good so far. So now uh, our two main characters have gotten to know each other a little bit more and our main Lady Dahlia is living in the manor full time because basically the Lich, Sebastian, convinced her that 
if she leaves, she's probably going to be in more danger than if she stays in the house with him because her stepdad is trying to send like assassins after her and stuff. And she's like, I'd rather not, you know, get killed in my sleep. So she's staying at the house with him and they kind of strike this deal where she gets to live the house and he wants her to stay because he's really lonely and he's been alone basically for thousands of years and he only has people in his house who work for him and they're all like undead people and zombies and ghosts and stuff that he's like brought back to life with his necromancy powers and they're all really sweet so she's basically getting integrated into this like found family that he has of all of these little like ghosty beings who live in his house and it's really tender and Dolly is really into cooking and so she kind of takes over the kitchen and she starts like cooking family dinner for the entire staff and Sebastian and the staff is really excited because they haven't had real food in a long time because none of them like have to eat to survive but they like food and so they do this family dinner thing every night now with Dahlia there and Sebastian like reads them a story from a book as they're like having dinner and it's really really cute and it's kind of fun because Dahlia is really into cooking and baking and stuff and she hasn't been able to do it because of her stepdad like taking over her mom's house and so Sebastian is kind of just letting her like explore the manor and his house is really cool because it's magical too and it's basically this big dark like gothic manor and on the outside it looks like it's totally abandoned and dilapidated and stuff but on the inside he has it all decked out and he has this like haunted library that's really big and he has certain doors that open to like different worlds and stuff like there's these portal doors so like there's one in Dahlia's room that opens up to like this arctic mountain tundra with all this snow and she thinks it's really cool and there's also little like necromancy critters that run around the house so there's these little ghouls and stuff that get in to like different cupboards and like wardrobes and things and so there's a really funny scene where Dahlia like beats one with an umbrella and Sebastian's like it's okay it's just a ghoul like don't freak out so she keeps like running into these little magical things around the house it's really fun and uh there's also this zombie guy Kevin who's the groundskeeper and he's really funny and there's a lady Agatha who is a banshee and she also works for Sebastian and she uh helps Dahlia with a lot of stuff and they're kind of becoming like friends and it's really cute and it's kind of just following uh, Dolly and Sebastian as they're getting to know each other and kind of making this family together in a way in this house and Dolly is becoming like integrated with everybody else it's really cute so so far I'm really really enjoying it I'm actually really surprised about how much I'm liking this because I wasn't really sure what to expect going in and I feel like the Goodreads ratings are like kind of mid to be honest so I'm really into this and I feel like it's maybe like kind of an underrated uh, monster romance and I've never read anything with a lich before either so I think it's kind of a unique one so that's where I'm at with that and tomorrow morning Peyton and I are leaving town because we're going to visit family so I'm not sure how much more filming I'm gonna get done uh, in the next like couple of days for this vlog so I might just do whatever I can and read whatever I can and we'll go from there. So I will see you probably tomorrow and I might do some reading and stuff like that in the car and then check in with you whenever I get a chance. update so I read a little bit more of how to marry a lich sorry if you hear fireworks going off uh, and I am really enjoying it so far I think it's really cute the way that um, the lich Sebastian treats Dahlia really really well and it's pretty clear that he's been like watching her for the last five years as she's been running around in his yard without knowing it and he's already like really down bad for her but he doesn't really want to tell her that he's into her because he doesn't think that anybody would ever want to be with him because he is really 
like kind of has low self-esteem and he wears this witch doctor mask all the time so that nobody can see his face because i think he is some other kind of creature originally because dahlia says that the only way to become a lich is to um have this like spell put on you and it's really dangerous and a lot of people don't survive it and so he has green skin so she said usually people who have green skin in this world are either like fey or they're an orc or an ogre or something like that and so she's not sure what kind of creature he was before he became a lich uh but he wears like the mask all the time he doesn't want her to ever see his face or anything and he also wears clothes that cover like all of his body and so he's really secretive about like his physical appearance and stuff and so i don't think that he feels like she could love him if that makes sense and so he's really into her, but he doesn't really tell her that. And now Dolly is at this point where her evil stepdad is trying to assassinate her and stuff. So she's staying with Sebastian, but they go back into town and Dahlia wants to go and see her best friend Beatrice. Well, she has this betrayal that happens around Beatrice and uh, Dolly realizes that like she really doesn't have anybody that she can trust. And basically there's a clause in her inheritance that says she can't get her inheritance from her mom until she gets married. And she doesn't want to marry anybody though. And so she hasn't gotten it, but also her stepdad is trying to kill her uh, to get it. But there's also this clause in the inheritance that if she dies, then the armory uh, that has like this vault with all of her inheritance in it is supposed to be burned. And so her stepdad is trying to like get around that and force her to marry somebody so that he can get her inheritance and it's like a whole thing. So uh, Dahlia is talking to this magical lawyer guy that Sebastian has and the lawyer recommends like, hey, if you really want to be free of this situation with the stepdad, then you should marry Sebastian. And Dolly is like actually considering getting into this like marriage of convenience with Sebastian because she's like that would solve my problems because then I could get the inheritance and I could put the inheritance in Sebastian's magic manner and then her evil stepdad wouldn't be able to get it. And so she's kind of thinking it through and the lawyer knows that Sebastian has a crush on her and like all of Sebastian's staff knows and he like won't admit it that he's super like down bad for her. And so I think we're about to get to a part I think where she's gonna like propose to Sebastian or like mention it to him so I'm excited to see what happens with that it's going really good so far and also I started another book in my last vlog and it's called Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage and it's a cowboy romance it's the sequel to Done and Dusted and originally I wasn't gonna pick that back up for Summerween but I am buddy reading it with my friend Allie from Allie Do Is Read and she's great and uh, she just got the ebook and so I think we're gonna read that together and I was thinking that that book also counts for one of the summer ween prompts because it has this like night sky on the cover and that's one of the prompts so I think I might also pick that back up tonight and read some of that on my iPad that's kind of what I'm thinking if I don't fall asleep super early because I am tired uh, but that's kind of where I'm at and then in terms of the summer ween reading prompts technically I've already hit a few of the prompts because I did the read a book in the dark last night when I was reading on my iPad and then if I do uh, reading Swift and Saddled then that takes care of the read a book with a night sky on the cover so that's two prompts down and then if I'm reading Home Before Dark I still need to read some more of that that counts for read a book that's a thriller or horror and then reading How to Marry a Lich counts for read a book with five words in the title so that's already hitting four of the five prompts just in a couple days so I feel pretty good about that I'm doing really well with that so that's where I'm at and I'll update you when I've read something else Tootsie Roll. Hi. 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 What are you doing? Are you being a goober?
hello so we are back from our trip i didn't film a ton while we were there because we spent a lot of time out on the lake and i didn't want to drop my phone uh in the water so we spent a lot of time just like boating and hanging out with friends and family and stuff but i did get some reading done so i am now uh halfway through sheets i went ahead and started this little graphic novel and it's a really fast read so far i am 110 pages in and I'm really enjoying it so far so we're following this young girl named Marjorie and her mom passed away uh, like last spring and they own this laundromat and now it's just her and her dad and her little brother and Marjorie's in high school her little brother has just started kindergarten so he's really little he doesn't really understand like their mom's death and stuff and the dad has basically just like sequestered himself in their house and he doesn't really help with anything and I think he's like really depressed and I think it's kind of implied that he's like maybe drinking and stuff and so Marjorie is trying to keep the family business of the laundromat afloat and she's basically doing it all by herself and she's working her ass off and she's also just really sad because her mom is gone now and she doesn't really know what to do and she's having a hard time with the laundromat because a lot of the customers are really really extremely rude to her and she's having like kind of a hard time at school she doesn't really have friends and the other girls like make fun of her and she has a crush on this one like popular hot guy and all the other girls are always like all over him all the time and it's kind of a whole thing but she is kind of getting through it by playing piano at home because she used to do that with her mom when she was growing up and they have a piano in the house and so she's kind of playing the piano and stuff and just trying to like make it through and working really hard and she's you know kind of just shy and isolated in a lot of ways and there's this really weird creepy guy this guy right here uh he's just kind of an asshole businessman who lives in the town and he is trying to take the building from her that the laundromat's in because he wants to like build a yoga spa place in there and so he basically like tries to break in a lot of times at night and like put up flyers and stuff for his own future business and he's trying to get her to sell the place to him and she's telling him no but they're really struggling financially with the business and her dad is not in a good place and it's kind of like she lost both of her parents when her mom passed away which is really sad and so we have that storyline and then we also have this other storyline with this ghost named Wendell and Wendell is basically in this kind of like an afterlife place I guess for ghosts and this is what it looks like basically there's like all these little cabins where all of these ghosts live and all of the ghosts are the ghosts of uh, like young people who have passed away and so Wendell decides that he is like tired of being around the other ghosts and he basically takes the train back to the human world and you're not supposed to do that unless it's like an emergency or something and so he goes and he ends up hearing Marjorie when she's playing the piano and he's really into music and so he is like attracted by her piano playing and he gets into the laundromat and he starts like making like blanket forts and stuff out of the laundry and basically making a big mess in the middle of the night in the laundromat and Marjorie is trying to figure out like why the sheets and stuff are moving and it's pissing off all of the customers and a lot of the customers were already like mad at Marjorie because they don't think young girl should be running the business by herself and sometimes she's like late and stuff because she's going to school also on top of running this whole business on her own and so Wendell and Marjorie end up like meeting up basically and he's kind of causing a lot of problems for her but it's kind of interesting because there's all these ghosts and Marjorie talks about in the beginning how she like hates hates ghosts and she hates doing laundry and she's just really like not in a good place in her life and I think part of why she doesn't like the ghosts because it reminds her of her mom who just passed away and also this is set in the fall time during Halloween and so everybody's kind of talking about Halloween parties and ghosts and all that kind of stuff and it's really cute and I really like the art it's really beautiful it's really well done I really like the colors and stuff like on this page the colors are just really really cool this is one of the girls who's really mean to her but it's really an interesting look at grief too and i think that's really interesting and we also get some fun flashbacks in here of marjorie when she's thinking about her mom and you get to kind of see how she was raised by her mom and the connection that they had and how she lost her and all these different things but I'm interested to see what happens at the end of this story it's a, definitely a fast read because I've been reading the whole thing just today um, but I'm curious to see what happens with the ghosts and it seems like the ghosts really are like 
their own thing like they kind of have their own little ghosty world it doesn't really necessarily seem like Wendell is like a figment of her grief or anything like that so it, that's another interesting part of it for me but I'm really enjoying it so far and I am excited to read the end of it and then I have not read any more of Home Before Dark but I will be doing that in my next Summerween vlog uh, but I did get halfway through Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage so I'm now getting to the part where uh, the romance is starting to progress a little bit Sorry if you hear noises. Rigby is basically just being a menace in this litter box because he thinks it's a sandbox. Um, <laughs> he just likes to play in there sometimes. I don't know. He's weird. Whatever. Weird cat behavior. Anyway, uh, so we're halfway through Swift and Saddled and we've gotten to the point where uh, our two love interests are now living under the same roof because our main lady Ada her car basically is broken down and she likes to stay close to the job site where they're like rebuilding this guest house. And so the dad said, hey, you can like live in the big house with us. Well, Wes, her love interest, also lives in the house. And so she's kind of like trying to avoid him because they had that whole moment where they kissed in the bar and it was really spicy and she's kind of now realized who he is. And she's like, I don't want to do anything with him because he's technically her boss for this project. And this project means a lot for her career and she doesn't want to mess it up and so she's like it's really unprofessional for us to like have anything going on romantically so I'm just not even gonna go there and so she's kind of like giving him oh my god cat and fire not a good combo so she's basically like giving him the cold shoulder the entire time and uh, he is like okay I know that she's into me and I'm into her but she's giving me the cold shoulder like how do I get her to come around and so he basically is like hey like I know you need to go into town for stuff and you need to be able to have a car and so you can like take my truck and she's like okay cool and then she's like wait I don't know how to drive a stick shift and so he's like well it's okay like I'll teach you and so as it turns out there's this whole thing with her like past and her ex husband and stuff related to like him being really overbearing and like controlling because they only had one car when they were married and it was a stick shift and he would like drive her everywhere or he said he would and then end up with Ada just being really isolated because her husband was like controlling whether she could leave the house because she couldn't drive the car and he refused to teach her and so Wes is like it's cool like I'll teach you how to drive a stick shift but of course he's like being really flirty with her while he's teaching her and it's really cute actually and he kind of like strikes this deal with her that he'll teach her how to drive a stick shift if she will you know basically give him the time of day and like stop avoiding him and that's kind of where we're at right now where like they are starting to cross paths more in the house and she's starting to open up to him a little bit more about her past and she's getting to know him a little bit more and the only thing I don't like so far is that this author seems to like put in a lot of stuff in here just to like have mental health rep it seems to me like and so uh, she puts in here that Wes has depression, which is fine. Okay, I'm worried about Rigby. Hold on. I guess Rigby's fine. He better not light anything on fire. Whatever. He's going to eat the flowers. It's fine. Uh, but basically, she says that Wes has depression, which is fine. But it's really weird because we get this scene where Wes is like giving us an internal monologue in his own head. And he's talking to us about his depression. But the way that it's written is really odd. It's like... He unnatural like he wouldn't be talking in his own head to himself about his own depression like he would already know if that makes sense and so it just really takes me out of the story whenever the author like inserts the mental health stuff like that anyways but it just takes me out of the story when she's like inserting all the mental health stuff because it, it doesn't feel natural the way that it's like being brought up in the story and I understand like wanting to have rep and that's perfectly fine, but it just seems odd the way that it's like bring, being brought up, if that makes any sense. So she kind of did that in book one too with uh, the main character Emmy's ADHD, but this one it felt a lot more like blatant and just kind of like didn't jive with the rest of the story. And it's not that like the character Wes couldn't have depression, like that's fine and I think that makes sense, but it's just the way that 
he brings it up in his own mind for absolutely no reason that does not make any sense but he is like open with ada about like oh i need to go and pick up my antidepressant in town and she's like oh you have depression he's like yeah and they're you know they have like an understanding about that and it's cool so anyways that's interesting in my opinion but i don't know if i love the way that the author like brought it up if that makes sense hi hi rigby do you want to say hi Anyways, that's where I'm at. So that's all I have for this vlog. To recap, I read half of Sheets, uh, the beginning of Home Before Dark, half of Swift and Saddled, and probably a quarter of Tamaria Lich. And I'm really enjoying everything that I've been reading so far. And so that wraps up the first part of my Summerween reading vlogs. Hopefully I'll have another vlog up for you guys soon. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video very soon. Make sure to let me know what spooky books you've been reading for Summerween down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see some more spooky videos from me. And I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye! Thank you.